morning and welcome. This is Sunrise Daily on the first work day of this week. Am I a For some people. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start off your day right. Welcome to Sunrise Daily. I'm Kaede Okikele. And to start that day right, we'll begin with the papers. And Wale Fatade joins us this morning. He is commissioning editor with The Conversation Africa. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. I hope you had a good Easter. It was wonderful. I left your Lagos. You left our Lagos? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. But wonderful. Yeah, you're back to the Lagos. I'm back right? to your Lagos. Is it not one of those sense of it was, it was I a, know. So, so Lagos has been here. It was a relaxing period for me. Yeah. I haven't paid my taxes in Lagos for nearly three decades. I mm -hmm. still have to I mean I still have to go to Ocean State to get documents that I'm from Ocean State. So okay. it's your Lagos. Oh dear. <laughs> Anyway, that's not the conversation this morning. <laughs> the first of those uh, we are talking about is on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. By the way, I hope you are not doing census migration. Don't answer that yet. Nigerian Tribune this morning leads with uh, Afe Babalola to FG. Suspend 2023 elections. Set up six-month interim governments. That's the lead of the Nigerian Tribune newspaper this morning and has a few writers. Proposes new constitution that will provide for part-time legislators wants next president to be healthy, educated, not more than 60 years old, says Nigeria faces bankruptcy due to activities of corrupt leaders. Stories on page 23. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I, I saw the stuff when it broke late yesterday night and substantially I agree with what Baba Babala is proposing. And Full disclosure, I'm not sure I've seen Baba Babalola in almost two decades. So, uh, I mean, but those who know me privately, and I'm sure some of my friends and family members who might be watching, I will know that I've always believed that elections cannot solve our problems. And the, the people that have, the only set of people that have benefited from regular election cycle in Nigeria remains our politicians, not the rest of us. I might have issue with the aspect of legislating on age. Because after all, young will become old. So you, if you are fit, you are fit. But I, I have issue with the way the federation is is currently set up. The way I mean, what's the difference between APC and PDP and other parties? They, we have been shown that parties are just vehicles to get people elected. After election, what is happening? We just approve our, how much trillion naira now? Was it for whatever for subsidy? And here we have universities that have been shut down for over two months. You know, I, I did put out a proposal at some point to yeah. ask you that maybe you should choose subsidy or using that same amount same of so that to our pay government will actually needs assessment. Yeah. But elections essentially are they meant to solve the problem, or it's just a now, part in, in of part the of the, 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 for uh, elementary political science? Regular election is a sign of a growing democratic culture. But we have seen in our own place, like every other thing, we have defied the norm. We have defied the normalcy. And so elections cannot solve our problem. And the Baba made some fundamental things. For me, I've always believed that we have a bloated legislature. 109 senators, and I think 360 something as of rep members, all drawing allowances without fail. And yet, IPPIS is what is causing problems with our university lecturers. Mm -hmm. And so I support the, um, what did the Baba use? Part time legislators. I support that. In fact, for me, I think we need just one body, a unicameral legislature, not by camera. The other one, I, I'm not sure that our problem is whether it is presidential or parliamentary system of government. I think we don't have enough empirical evidence to say that. But the reality which we should stop pretending is that the structure is not working. Because we, we have seen the fundamental and inherent uh, flaws in how, our structure. How that will, our foundation is faulty. But how will a new constitution solve that problem? A new constitution. Now, the, 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 I, I like that question. I think the, the, what is the problem with the constitution now is the sense of ownership. The, the first phrase of we the people, that's fraud. I was not part of that. Yes, a group of people wrote the 1999 constitution. I'll be, uh, How could you have been a part of that? Okay, what are the substantial issues we want to agree on? No, because, I'm just saying if... No, I'm, I'm, and I'm answering that okay. because you are the one asking the question. Let me answer that. That what are the issues that are germane to our existence as a nation? We've spoken about whether it's true federalism or it's no federalism. Till today, some state governments are still in arms. I'm, I mean, true federal structure, there are only two federating units, the federal and the state. So it's up to a state to determine the number of local governments they want to have. The other question, why must we have 774 local governments in the constitution? 
who gave it that? So the question, which is why I wanted to clear it out, is yeah. you said you were not a part of it. I was it. And I imagine for the was it 200 million Nigerians as well, they might say I was not a part of yes. it. So how can you ensure that every Nigerian is a part of that constitution yeah, really, we, we, in the build-up to the making? Yeah, process? let's agree on what are the issues we want to discuss on. As many as we people are bothered about, list them out. How can we agree on that? Ah, yo, what are the issues that are germane to me? as a person but that issue that are germane to other people across the federation and you can be sure that across all of us there will be similarities there will be synergy and so total that and let's start talking about that so well, maybe a confab whether I, I, you use confab or, or referendum whatever or... you call it we just have to talk about the way we want to live together I mean, sudan was together for about 50 years it broke we see what libya has become fine you can agree there are external influence you can see what is happening across the sahel now which place is safe and so when a group of people do not have common goals aspirations and objectives we see what we have in our country now well there are those who will argue that the people who wrote the constitution are nigerians as well but that, oh, yes, that's yes, yes, conversation yes. Level, you might not be able to speak for your family <laughs> even though you are the head of the family all right well right above the name plays a very very troubling um story on the front page of the nigerian tribune this morning Dubai sex tape, Lagos shuts down Chrislan schools. Stories on page two. Sharing child pornography attracts 14 years in jail at once. Please begin investigation. This has been a uh, much talked about topic and it's very, very concerning, wouldn't you say? It, it, it's, it's sad. And you know, I think this is the second or third time that I will be here analyzing stories. I mean, newspapers, and we find something that has to do with, with a child or children now. As a father, it's, it's, it's troubling. And the question I want to ask is that, who, who takes such people to Dubai? Ten year old? Fine, children go on excursion. On uh, Saturday, was it Saturday or Friday? Saturday, I was talking with a friend of mine. We grew up together. And we were talking about the impact our teachers have on us or had on us as younger people. And now we never knew they were such benefit to us and so at age 10 i was already in secondary school and i know that if, if i didn't go for camp from school i would have gone for camp from the church i would have gone for camp from boy scout i would have gone for camp on neighborhood so at what point did the adult supervision break down those are issues and how how come those kids have access to those gadgets mm. and they were able to use it and i remember reading the biography of a uh, was this late Apple guy, Steve Jobs, saying that his children never had access to gadgets on their certain age. And in my own house, until you finish your high school, you only share the phones of your parents. No, you don't have your own phone, but you share our phone. So we give it to you to use whatever you want to use. So I think it's, it's, it's bothersome on all fronts. The other thing which we said when this other one happened, the is it or maybe run or whatever i can remember the Darwin college the Darwin college the level of super, supervision of private schools in lagos is suspect what is the inspectorate division doing i know there is a quality and assurance division in the ministry of education what are they doing all these things can't they just track them and and i think shutting down all the christian schools i'm not sure that is actually the the way to go about it the, the children the, need therapy the, a lot of things have gone one wrong. of the questions that i often ask occasionally when we come to issues like this is okay i haven't heard a situation where children in a school a public school in u.s even a private school in u.s leave the country to go have a question i haven't heard maybe it happens i don't know i haven't heard such about the uk so what is wrong with taking our children from one part of nigeria to other parts of nigeria to know the nation better i, I think some of these things which we at certain level sadly those of us who are parents feel in that we we take our children to certain schools to satiate our own ego these children do not understand whichever school they are going to. So I think the, the level of parenting we have these days is suspect. I'm a parent. And so, but the other thing we have lost, not that we are losing, is that Yoruba saying of uh, only a pair of eyes give birth. 100 or 200 pairs of eyes raise the children. We have lost that. You know, there are things, I, and because of my nature, sorry, Kaido, because of my work nature, I see kids as late as 10 a.m. sauntering to school. I mean, <laughs> I've had to break fights around 10, 11 a.m. I've had to see children in high school, secondary school, smoking weed at that moment. I've had to see them improperly dressed. And all of us as adults, as guidance, we pretend that does not concern us as long as they are not our children. 
I've seen those things. Yeah. It, it, you know, as, as news people, you prepare for stories. Any eventuality. But, but, the, but this one just... Throws you off balance. Honestly, and yes, it's a developing story. Different sides. I mean, the, the, the parents' side has been heard. Well, the but school who, who side test, as well. Who tests the 10 year old for pregnancy for gossip? And, and, and that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. So I think that a statement has been put out by the school saying, well, the most they did was a COVID-19 test. As I said, it's a developing story. In fact, it is said that that trip was for a sporting event not an excursion, as it was. It's a global school sporting so, event. So, were they representing it, Nigeria or were they were representing Lagos State? So, questions that might be put to, <laughs> to the school, essentially. But at least we know that the school uh, or the schools have been shot under the chain of of Chrisland. The police is investigating it. But it's important to get those facts clear. The other question for me is: Are police are they adequately empowered enough to know what to find out? Well, this is end, an yeah, endless conversation, and as Kari said, the more questions, the more the issues, more issues that have to be. Yeah, Just a quick up. one to mention that APC, PDP, APGA, others notify INEC on presidential uh, convention. PDP to hold primaries May 29, APC May 30, 31, SDP, seven others keep mum on dates. Find that story on page 25. Well, let's turn our attention to Guardian. The Guardian newspaper is next on our lineup, and this is what you find on the front page. Mm, different from you know some of the issues raised so far and take a look at it investors want more slice of 13.76 trillion naira pension assets in stocks only seven percent of pension invested in equities adonry market too risky volatile for pension fund investment I imagine people with pensions. Uh, I'm, uh, my heart is palpitating okay. already. <laughs> okay, yeah, let me finish the right. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe it will calm you. Yeah, because nerves. CC is the retirement age, and I'm just wondering that what that is. <laughs> and you're nearing that. <laughs> I already. mean, I'm, I'm, I'm marching towards 60. Okay. <laughs> More riders. Worries over government borrowing from funds despite growing default rate. PFAs invest 74.54 billion naira in infrastructure. CBN eyes funds for InfraCore. Low PFAs investment profile responsible for rising illiquidity. 22 states responsible for low enrollment. So the Guardian is focusing on this very broad, I mean, 13.76 trillion. That's very close to our 2022 budget, just yeah. how many trillions yeah. Yeah. less. So very important sector or sub-sector. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm speaking as, as someone who's pension funds, and I'm just You're like... You're an interested party in this Definitely. Case. And I'm, I'm curious. I think for me, with my own uh, little experience, I won't support investment in stocks. Is volatile, and I think the, there is a pension act that specifies the specific amount or the percentage that could be invested in stocks. I think, but the other one that the, the rider that you mentioned is the lack of um, repayment, prompt repayment. That's worrisome. So that by the time we want to draw this, what happens? The other thing I, I think there is that provision too of uh, subscribers being able to borrow borrow from the pension fund i'm aware that in the u.s you can take out of your is it 401 or 444 whatever so that but then you pay interest so i think people maybe we will encourage that more of subscribers borrowing funds so that you pay so but I, I, the other thing i'm bothered about is when money sits down line follow there is issue then do they have are they able to do offshore investment can they do that <laughs> Uh, the Daily Trust newspaper is talking, is interested in the elections this morning, and this is what you have on its front page. Section 8412, 53 commissioners, others resign in states as Buhari's ministers stay put. Uh, two riders, Ngege declares for presidency today. It's against the law to remain in office, says Fage. No big deal, says Kari. Different strokes. Yeah, different are the two people lawyers? If they are lawyers, then we should not worry. Because lawyers have this nice ability to argue both sides of an issue. But I, I think it's, it's up to the courts to adjudicate. And I could imagine my lawyer friend salivating already on the fantastic briefs that might come after this. <laughs> I, th I think we have not sorted it out. The, there is a case in court that the National Assembly or the Senate said they are appealing. So I think we'll, let's see it out. Too. But if I were in those shoes, I would resign so that yeah, I would not be caught napping mm. when things happen. Well, let's turn our attention to Daily Times, and we're still talking funds, uh, just as we saw in The Guardian, but this is a different kind of funds entirely. It's the $418 million Paris, Paris Club loan refund, almost a tongue twister there. And you see, don't tamper with funds accruing to us, states one FG. 
say if FG proceeds to make any deduction, it will be acting illegally and in con contempt of their appeal. Uh, so this back and forth between... Yeah, you know that story of uh, someone being a consultant, deserving this or not deserving this. But and uh, I watched the press conference. You so. know, being a consultant, it, there, there are no rules guiding it, essentially. It's yes. maybe whatever agreement you had before saying, okay, I'm going to get 10% of yeah, this but, when but it goes through. But if you are consulting essentially for broke... me, you must get my consent before you consult for me. You don't retain a consultant on my behalf. No, I've not given you the power of attorney, and I think that's what the states are arguing about. But you know, I, I don't that think that the it's... consultants was retained not without their, I mean, without their input or whatever. Mm. You know, it's been long drawn oh, out yes. that the some of the claims have not been verified. That uh, and there have been allegations that the attorney general of the federation is in cahoots with this consultant. A lot of stories, a lot, and I think our colleagues have done great, great stories on this. So the the why can't the federal government wait for the case to? To get its logical conclusion before taking decision well speaking of logical conclusion that's all we conclude with the daily times <laughs> well but uh nigerian news direct is not concluded on that story oh, there you that's go. what he has on his front page 418 well i'll expect that there's some million somewhere there paris club loan refund any deduction will be illegal contempt of appeal say governors Say they were not parties to any suit on loan refund. Deduction may cause slip into bankruptcy for some physical fragile, physically fragile states. That's a dimension brought by Muda Yusuf. The details you find on the inside pages of the paper this morning. <laughs> Well, I uh, see that there's a consensus at least on that topic. But let's turn our attention to politics with the leadership newspaper. Well, 2023. It's just uh, 15 minutes away for a lot of politicians, as I say, quarter to 2023. And that's where you find Igbo presidency. Southeast leaders want consensus across party lines. And a uh, host of riders, Ohaneze, to meet Southeast presidential aspirants, as Ingege declares today. PDP scrambles to reduce a number of aspirants and uh, a host of other riders there. Uh, do you think gradually the political parties, or at least the political players, are nearing a consensus tilting towards the southeast right now, or is still generally being thrown <laughs> open anywhere? That's, north, that's, south. Uh, that's, that's so far fetched, and uh, it will be difficult for me sitting down here to pronounce oracularly on that. But then, from years of covering the political field in Nigeria, I don't think so. I don't think so. And interestingly, I would actually love so. I will wish so. And for those who might be pillaring our Igbo people, we remember that after the death of Abacha in 1999, there was a near unanimity of opinion that gave it to the Yoruba people to pacify them. And so I, fine, someone might argue that the situations are different. But I think for, for to strengthen the bond of what we have, we might be looking at the Igbo people. But the other thing again now is up to the Igbo people to persuade the rest of us to let us know what you are going to do differently and to let us know that you are not getting that just to break down this roof upon our head. So it must be give and take for both sides. So Ivo Aneze is actually trying to ensure that they prune down the aspirants. And I think now each of us in the newsroom should be running a calendar of who we declare today so that we can be, we can be updating that. It was a daily <laughs> declaration now. Oh, there you go. That's a leadership newspaper. They love other stories right there, but I'll let you do the choosing yourself. Well, the Vanguard newspaper leads with money talks, but not the ones we've talked before. That's it. Four trillion naira bill. How petrol subsidy grew by 349.42% in three years. Uh, has a lot, a uh, number of riders. While well, cost of subsidy is rising by experts, well, Mr. Fatali is already laughing. You have your. Day. No, you know why I'm laughing. Why I'm laughing is that I could still picture that whether it's a campaign footage or the interview of our president that what subsidy, and I hope people can maybe you people can play that repeatedly so that our president can answer the question himself. That what subsidy? What are they subsidizing? That was a president before he assumed office, but now under him, subsidy has grown. In fact, I think they must look for another adjective. This is more than astronomical. You know, when, when, you, when, you, when you raise that, as a number of people have raised it um, uh, as well, one of the questions that comes to my mind is, the president today was at some point heading the Ministry of Petroleum. Yeah. 
not was. Still, he's still the no, substitute as in, minister. At some point, was, back okay. in time. Okay. And then I think this whole subsidy talk started under the Goan government. Yeah, many years ago. Yes. So I, I remember an article I did it like that. It started uh, under the Goan government. So if we had that, you know, back then, and the president, before he became president, was saying there is no subsidy. I'm wondering where you think that was coming from. Well, the, the, the question is that we cannot, this is our country, we cannot rule out some shenanigans or some games being played on subsidy payment. That's one. The other thing for me is that why we might not, uh, we should demand accountability from those we should. What has happened to this government's promise of fixing our refineries in seven years? Nothing has been done. That's a crucial thing. Well, since we've already talked about that, let me leave that main story. And um, there is that story you find right above uh, the nameplate. Insecurity sit at home, petrol scarcity caused food price hike in quarter one of 2022. That's according to a report. The story is on page nine, and it will seem like that. It's serious. The different UN agencies in the last two months have spoken about how food security is a huge, huge problem in Nigeria. They've identified some states, including our FCT, as we are to bite very hard. Well, speaking of the FCT, <laughs> let's head over to the nation's capital with the Abuja Inquirer. This is what you find on the front page. It's on school feeding, <laughs> interestingly about food as well. FCT bill climbs to 12.5 million naira daily, captures 44,000 additional pupils, vendors plan protest over huge debts yes because you and it is across <laughs> states I'm, I'm familiar with this because I, I got family members who have vendors who are cooking and selling the food and i was asking one of my aunties she said she's no longer doing it because they don't pay them so she has stopped and it, it, it's serious one angle you should look at it is that food cost is increasing mm. food prices are skyrocketing a, a gentleman was telling me yesterday how he, he was shocked the two fishes you want to buy wanted to buy the one we call titus how they said the long one he asked for was 1005 and he said he eventually bought it but that when he got to he said he told his wife that thank you because i don't know how you have been managing if this is what i saw in the market <laughs> but you know that that will also then question for those that are still in that i mean 44,000 additional pupils that's even just for the fct alone that yes. will question first the quality of the food now it because if they're not down. being paid it must have gone down those vendors will always find a way at least okay, me... getting uh, getting by but, yeah so, so the quality would have been diminished and would government is not unaware now. of the cost rising cost of food you the, just read to us the inflation the report, report yeah. exactly if anything the government is essentially uh, in charge right now seeing all that data yeah. so how should we approach this school feeding matter i know it's been controversial over time it's something it's something definitely a lot of people welcomed especially what it will do to the education system oh, look, encourage so more studies children have shown that food or hunger keep children away from school and then the the, the chain of and businesses shown that, that when you feed children the attendance increases exactly and so romans so, so that's for the education aspect yes. the business aspect you've said that you know people that what have happened? been you yeah. know i mean well when he was working well i imagine that they were smiling to the back yes. so how do we approach this well it, it, it's thing? up to us to be you know the only the first question we need to be sure of in our country is the money truly being spent on what it should be spent on and then is it getting to where our destination or our target is then i could imagine how many supervisors we have Mm. That was a beautiful story. One of our, some of our colleagues did on the, what's this other one? The one they give to unemployed people, and with graphics, beautifully illustrated how before the money gets to oh, the, the actual, empower, the empower, thank okay. you. Before the money actually gets to the graduates that they ought to get to, it has been chiseled out due to different layers, and then you will not rule out fraud or corruption. So that's what we need to do. And then the other thing again is that how many? What does it cost to feed an average student? Because you have to review that cost. Mm. What it cost when the program started cannot be the same cost as that today. No, you, you, you said something that's very striking now, and I think many people will be very shocked and interested in, in, Which one? in how um, we can use it to stem the tide of certain uh, values that have been... Oh, studies have shown that. Attendance increases. About, about school children yeah. being fed, 
helps them to stay in school. Oh, yeah. It helps their learning, it helps the cognitive ability. Studies have shown that a lot of them have not eaten balanced diet in their homes. It's only what they eat in the school that increases their brain. And child psychologists and pediatricians will tell us that the first five years of a child are the most important years for his or her brain to be well formed. With this information known to us, um, what would you say might be responsible for the quote unquote failure? Of this program, oh, which uh, we know, I think for me, based I, for on what my you have inside, said, yeah, just a second, it's just the money said. not getting to where it should get to. But the but what, money not being well spent. That's see, uh, my question is about the system, the systematic, uh, systemic issue that we systemic, have. Uh, like every other because thing, intervention. If we, yeah. in, if we institutionalized it, yes, as we should have institutionalized so many things in our in our nation yeah. and systems this wouldn't be an issue some yeah. things would just go like a conveyor belt yeah because you could actually even start from the farmers that for this set of farmers are their farm products are solely for school feeding program and so you can change you can i'm sorry the farmers are guaranteed access market access which is important for them too because sometimes those local farmers do not get value for their products so they are guaranteed value the cooks are there so there's a whole lot of value chain that can be added but let me add this to it because we're talking education then we've talked about our system and, and all of that sadly just recently i think it was unicef that was speaking about how many schools have been closed 11, over 11,000. yes yeah. so on the one hand we're doing this to ensure that more children get into school and i mean yeah. we talk about the future right we need to raise leaders of the future yeah. ensure we have yes. a better educated yes. population but on the other hand over 11,000 schools closed. That's security angle. I mean, when, when, a child, when children go to school today, some people will come and take them away. I mean, you will be a fool to say, my child, go to school again tomorrow. That's the security issue. Oh, clearly, multi so we must tackle we must tackle the hunger issue. We right. must I, tackle the security issue. I, I saw and you know the other thing again too, farmers have left the farmlands because of security. Since we know all these things, I'm just hoping that we'll be able to face them squarely, especially concerning children. Because just as we said yesterday, remember what uh, former President Obasan just said, that if, the, if we don't take these children back to school, we are literally creating But we can see, children in Nigeria are the most vulnerable. They are the most at risk. To be a child in Nigeria is, is, is akin to, to a death wish. <sighs> we hope not. We, are, right. well, we hope it will change. Hopes, hopes, hopes. Well, let's close with Mr. and Mrs. Hope springs well, this is a new one. Mrs. Mrs. is saying to Mr. with her back turned to him, he spends half his money on energy drinks and aphrodisiacs. Now, what do you call that? And the man, closing his eyes, an interruptible power supply. Wali <laughs> Fatadi. Yes. Thank you so much for this morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. Nice to be here. Well, Sunrise Daily continues right after now with our first issue for the day, and it's about security again. Please tell us.